I need something to brighten up my day because you guessed it, we're back in lockdown. Lockdown four, lockdown 400, I don't know, I've lost count, but means that I can't go hunting, but I've got to make the best of a bad situation or I'm going to clean some of my rifles. But I'm not here to talk about that. What I am here to talk about is what's in front of me. And that's something that I've never personally owned and something that I've never really used myself. And that is a rifle bore scope. So we're all going to find out together whether this is something that I would use and whether it's something that I'd think that other hunters and shooters could also use. But what makes this one special, first of all, it's made by a company called Teslon. And this one is a model NTG450H, which has got a solid 26 inch rod with one inch increments on it. It's a 20 cal and upwards. And it's basically a digital camera with six LEDs and three brightness levels on it. But what makes it special is this recording device, which is the integral part of it. It basically allows you to record photographs video up to 1080p with audio, playback on the unit, recording is into a 32 gig micro SD card which actually comes with a unit. It charges off USB-C, but what sort of really makes me think this is going to have some advantage is this right angle mirror that screws onto the end of the camera like so on the end of the rod and what it does is basically allows you to look at right angles to the rod so in other words directly into your rifling as it travels down the barrel and if you are recording video with audio you can record your own voice telling it as you're seeing it in other words if you see a dark spot or a rusty spot at 15 inches from the muzzle you can say that and you can see you can slide this little stopper down to get an idea where you are on the barrel pretty simple menu system um, i'm hoping you can see this here basically that mode there now is on video mode you can cycle through the modes that's on playback that's on camera to take a photo you basically just press that take a shot go on video press the same button it, you'll see it counting down press again to stop Brightness levels, as I probably already mentioned. Let me see if I can get them there. You can see it go through, cycle away. You've also got digital zoom of 1.3 and 1.5 times. I don't know whether that would come in handy. Uh, usually there's some sort of degradation to image quality when you do that. But it'll be interesting to see. Obviously your menus here and your power button on and off. I'm keen to see how it works. It's certainly not overpriced at about $129 US, about $180 Australian. It's certainly worth looking at whether it's something I'll, I would race out and buy. Well, I don't know at this stage, but what I'm going to do is clean these rifles. Certainly wouldn't be shoving this down a dirty, fouled barrel. So in other words, I'm going to run a dry cloth down the barrels of each first. Put this down each barrel check what they look like at the start before cleaning and then clean them and check them again. We'll come back, we'll assess some of the footage, see what the quality of the footage is like and basically then I'll reassess where I think this sits and whether it's something that I would go out and buy or who I think this is really aimed towards. But anyway, I'm not going to go in and show you all my cleaning of my rifles because I'm sure you've seen how I do it before. I'm not going to bore you, so let's get into it, clean it, and then I'll get back to you. Well, that certainly took longer than I anticipated, but it was well worth it, actually. Um, I learned a few things on what to look for in the barrels, and it certainly gives you an idea if your cleaning regime is up to scratch. I started off with the 85, the Seiko 85 and the 204, which has probably had somewhere between six and 700 rounds put through it over its lifetime. Then I moved on to the Tika in the 7mm Rem Mag, which has probably had somewhere oh, just over 150 rounds put through it. Both probably didn't need a clean, but I checked them with the bore scope before, cleaned them and checked them again. And it was quite interesting to see the um, imperfections in the steel um, through production of the metal. Uh, at first it's a little bit off-putting and you think there's something wrong, but then you soon realise that that is just part of it. 
I then moved on to the Bagara, the BA13 in 308. Uh, again, not really needing a clean, but I gave them a touch up, check through with the scope. Uh, and surprisingly, some of the imperfections in the actual Bagara were quite a little bit bigger than say what's in the Seiko and the Tika. But again, thing shoots like a laser. It's not, not an issue. It's just part of barrel manufacturing. Then I thought, let's have a look at my custom Seiko 243 with a Madco barrel, match grade barrel. Now, I know this is getting past its best, but it still shoots well, shooting somewhere between a third and on a good day, quarter minute of angle. I ran the scope through that, and as I would expect, quite a bit of erosion, and like what I'd class as crystallization, superheating of the first two to six inches past the chamber. What you could see when you move further down is the quality and smoothness of that uh, Madco barrel and definitely a difference between that and the uh, factory barrels. But bear in mind that Madco is stainless, the others are chrome only. Now, just touching on that point, for those that think that um, buy a stainless rifle, it's not gonna rust or whatever, well, don't kid yourself, they still corrode. And even though I stored that probably six to nine months ago, running an oily patch through the barrel, <laughs> That bore scope soon showed a couple of little frightening points when I first looked at it, which was just a couple of little bits of corrosion, which soon buffed out with the wire brush, no problem at all. So anyway, it just shows you that, look, I can't emphasize enough, especially if you're in a humid area or a moist area, run some sort of uh, moisture protection unit, a damp sorb, I don't know if you can see that, but that's been in my safe for about six months and there's the best part of 100 mil in there, so I've just changed that today. Anyway, not to get distracted, where do I see this bore scope uh, fitting into a uh, hunting and shooting scenario? Probably for the average hunter and shooter, I don't think you need to rush out and buy one. Certainly within uh, you know, a good price range, and if you've got a group of mates that sort of hunt and shoot together, uh, may pay to have one between you because it'll certainly tell you if your cleaning regime's up to scratch and certainly give you an idea of how your barrels are going. But where I really think it's going to come into its own and well worth considering is for those target shooters, bench rest shooters, um, yeah, definitely worth looking at. And for those long range guys that uh, want to get the best out of their rifles, it wouldn't hurt to check your barrel when you first buy your rifle, document it uh, via video. Uh, you'll soon get an idea then as you progress down the line how it's traveling, how your cleaning's going on that gun and basically give you an idea where you're at. So anyway, it's certainly something different for me. It, the unit's actually impressed me quite a lot actually. Quite a good little standalone unit. So I'll leave a uh, link in the description of this video if you're interested. And uh, for now, thanks for watching and until next time. Mm -hmm.